image classification is a very important problem in computer vision image classification has numerous use cases in all different industries being able to perform image classification on your custom data set with ai algorithms becomes very important in today's day and age and in this video we're going to talk about how you can train a model on a custom data set to perform image classification so stay tuned until the end of this video Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Roop. I'm an engineer at Convolve. At Convolve, we assist small, medium, large enterprises with solutions that are based on AI and computer vision. If you are a corporation, if you are a business and you're looking for certain solutions uh, that can help improve your efficiency, improve your revenues that are based on computer vision and AI, we would love to chat with you. Here is our contact information. Feel free to contact us and we would be happy to chat with you. For image classification, firstly, what is the motivation? Why is this important? What is an example use case? A very relevant example of image classification is the Google Photos app in all of your cell phones. Uh, in that application, you can uh, find people or find images by faces, right? So for example, if I were to find all the images in uh, that contain my face, uh, that app tells me, right? And that app is able to tell that because it has classified every single image based on who it is in that image and who it belongs to. That forms a great example for image classification. On top, image classification is used in uh, industries, in manufacturing, uh, as an example, uh, there can be an AI model uh, that essentially uh, classifies the objects moving through an assembly line as good or bad. Uh, it takes an image of the object and then an image classifier either predicts uh, that that object is good, which means everything goes by smoothly, or if it predicts bad, then further action can be taken. This way, there are a lot of other applications for image classification. And now let's see how you can uh, apply image classification on a custom data set and how we can leverage the power of these algorithms to be able to do image classification in the wild. Now guys, for this particular video, we will be using the YOLO model for image classification. For this demo, we'll be using YOLO V11, which is the latest for uh, uh, of the YOLO models. Uh, on the screen, you can see this uh, image classification data sets overview from Ultralytics. This is the package from which we obtain the YOLO model and use this for training. So here is the structure that the model is expecting. The model wants the base directory, that is the data set directory, to have these directories, a train directory, a test directory, and then a validation directory, which is optional. Uh, inside the train and test directories, you have the class name and in each of uh, the class name folders you have all the images that belong to that class those images can be named anything but essentially the important thing is that the folder in which the images are located is named after the class that it represents so the automobile will have all the images of automobiles airplane will have all the images of airplanes a bird uh, folder will have all the images of birds so that's how the data is arranged similarly you'll have a test folder which mimics the train folder but it has different images and usually a subset of um, it's essentially a subset of the whole data set and it's uh, the, of the size maybe 20 percent of the total training data set and then once you have all of this set up the next step is to use the model training code from ultralytics so let's see how we can use this. So guys, on the screen, you can see a sample data set. This is the data set that we use to train uh, the classification model, the YOLO classification model. And this essentially uh, is a data set of different images from different sports. And uh, this has 100 classes, 100 different sports. Uh, and the objective of the model is to learn to classify an image and tell which sport that image is from. For example, there may be a, a photograph from soccer, uh, baseball, football, rugby, cricket, and given a model that is trained, you give that model an image and it should be able to predict the sport that that image 
belongs to. Now guys, we downloaded the data set and this is what it looks like. There is a test, train and validation folder. So let me show you some sample images in this data set. So here are the images for air hockey. And you can see these images of air hockey in there, right? So these are training images that will be used to train the YOLO model. Now, after we have this data set, the next step is to then set up the code. Uh, so guys, first of all, you need to have Ultralytics installed on your computer to be able to run this. Uh, let me show you the code here. The code is pretty simple. You need the Ultralytics toolbox and then you just need to import the YOLO 11 nano classification model. Um, and then you use uh, that pre-trained model and train it further on your custom data set. So guys, line number one, we are importing uh, YOLO from Ultralytics. So you need to install the Ultralytics package. Uh, you can do that by doing pip install Ultralytics. Now guys, if you do not have a virtual environment, it's a good idea to create a virtual environment and install everything in there. Okay? The next step is to load the model. So here, this command is going to load the YOLO 11 nano classification checkpoint. If it's not on your computer already, it will download it from the web and it will save it in your local directory. Lastly, we call the train command and here the data is the path to the data set that you want to train or fine tune your model on. And this path is the path that I showed you. So we just passed the path to this data set that we just downloaded. And then we tell it to train for 100 epochs uh, with an image size of 640. So all of this is customizable based on the problem setting and the based on what you are trying to do. Then guys, once we have this, the training process is pretty simple. Uh, all you need to do is call python train.py and the training will begin. I have already done this training and let me show you the output from my training session. So guys, here on the screen is the uh, output from the training session. Uh, ran the training for uh, 100 epochs and all the metrics are being displayed while the model is training. Um, and once the model is done training, um, the output results will be saved in that particular folder. So on uh, in, in the folder where you ran the code, it will create a runs folder. And for each of your training run, there will be a separate folder. So most recent run is train three, which I just finished training for 100 epochs. And here uh, we can see uh, some sample training batches. So these are the batches that are fed to the model to train that particular model. So these are the training batches. And after training, we'll have some uh, uh, further validation batches. Let me show you some validation batches. So this is a validation batch on which the model is being validated. So here you can see all the classes along with the sport. So this is tennis, this is pole climbing, this is luge, hand gliding, giant, giant slalom. Uh, all of this is over here. And now let's go to what the predictions are. So guys, here we see that predictions are almost correct. Only the prediction for this is incorrect. Rugby is being, it, it's being classified as rugby while it's not rugby, but everything else is correct. So the model has learned, right? After 100 epochs. Similarly, this one, uh, you can see all different images and their corresponding titles on the top left of each image. And uh, there is no misclassification in this particular image. So these are the predictions from the network. And this is ground truth. So this one is ground truth. And now I'm going to go to the predictions. They are all the same, right? So the network is performing pretty perfectly on this batch. Another batch, bull riding, tennis, tug of war, first three images. And when we go to the predictions, again, it's doing perfectly well. There is no discrepancy. That's it, guys. This is how simple it is to train an image classification model on a custom data set. Uh, all you need to do is use the Ultralytics toolbox. Um, you can use that along with a data set which is uh, already um, put in the right format. And the right format is you have the base data folder. In that, you have at least two folders, a train folder and a test folder. Within the train and test folders, you'll have different folders for each of the different classes that you're trying to predict. 
and within each of that class folder will be all the images that belong to that particular class okay so uh, in the example uh, data set that uh, we used for this particular project uh, you have every uh, the base folder has a train folder in the train folder there will be a folder for rugby there will be a folder for tennis there will be a folder for air hockey and within those folders all the images belonging to rugby would be in the rugby folder all the images belonging to air hockey would be in the air hockey folder and so on once you have the data set in this format you just pass that data set to the model train command uh, and rest ultralytics has the backend to go fetch the data read the data start training on the data and also pre-process all the images based on the size parameters that you uh, pass in and then after the training is done it also gives you the output results that's it for this video guys feel free to try this out you can download the data set from Kaggle I've shown you the data set you can also use the code that I've shown in this video it's just three lines uh, and you can try this out for yourself try training your first image classification model and see how it goes thanks for tuning in guys if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you are notified about any new video that we upload uh, computer vision is progressing at a rapid pace and we are really glad that we are in this journey it's very exciting and i'm glad that you're being a part of that too thanks for tuning in guys again and i'll see you in the next video